Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto. And two of the common requests that I get are, can you make a keto ice cream? And can you use the Dash Mini Ice Cream Maker? Which I'm assuming means, can you make ice cream? And we're gonna do both in this video today. We are gonna be ketofying a recipe from Sugar Rush by Johnny Uzzini. Now, back in my pre-keto days, I loved this book, but it is probably the least keto-friendly cookbook you can imagine. But that's not gonna stop us from creating a keto version of the sour cream lemon sherbet, or sherbet. I'm not sure, it's spelt sherbet, but everybody I know pronounces it sherbet. That's what we're gonna make, and we're gonna make it right now. For starters, we're gonna need the zest and juice of one lemon. I like using a microplane for this. I'll just scrape this off into a bowl. I will include links to both the microplane and the citrus squeezer down in the description below. And I'm gonna set these aside while I get our cook surface ready. In a medium saucepan, add two thirds of a cup of sweetener. That's 135 grams. I'm using one third cup allulose, one third cup swerve, which is an erythritol based sweetener. The reason I'm combining two is I find when I use two non-sugar sweeteners, I tend to get a better flavor. Plus, if you use all erythritol, you're gonna wind up with a softer, almost soft serve consistency ice cream. I find it really doesn't firm up the way I want because of the alcohol sugars. So, two thirds cup combined sweetener of your choice. One half cup or 120 grams of water. The original recipe calls for honey. I'm using two tablespoons of this honey flavored allulose syrup. That would be 40 grams. And finally, one half teaspoon of salt, which is two grams. We'll bring the heat up to medium and whisk until dissolved. While our sweetener dissolves, I'm gonna add two and a half cups or 650 grams of sour cream to a mixing bowl. I like using one that has a spout on it. It makes it a lot easier later when we're pouring into the ice cream maker. Next, I'm gonna create an ice bath so that that's ready to chill our mixture before we put it into the ice cream maker. All right, it looks to me like all of our sweetener is dissolved and we pretty much have a syrup here. So we're gonna take this off the heat and add it to our sour cream. Now initially it is a little tricky in the ice bath to keep that sour cream bowl steady. Don't worry about it. As it starts to thin out, it's gonna get easier and easier to whisk. Once our syrup and sour cream are combined, we'll add the juice of one lemon. Whisk that in. And then our lemon zest. In the cookbook, Johnny Uzzini says that you should leave your mixture in the ice bath, stirring occasionally until it is very cold, and then refrigerate it overnight. To me, that seems a little bit redundant. We're just gonna let this sit in the ice bath, stirring occasionally, until we get a reading on our InstaRead thermometer that is probably in the upper 40 degree range. Right now, you can see we're at 69 degrees Fahrenheit, so this has got a little ways to go. Now, it may take an hour to an hour and a half to get this to the temperature that we want. Let's see where we're at right now. 45 degrees, good enough for me. And we'll prep our ice cream maker. And we wanna make sure that the ice cream maker is running as we add our sherbet mixture to it. Oh boy, took my eye off what I was doing there as I was scraping. 
Not sure I could have been messier on that. Mmm. Well, at least I gotta taste it. All right, we got this wiped off. Now we're gonna let it run for probably 30 to 60 minutes for it to get nice and thick and looking like soft serve ice cream. We're at a half hour in and our ice cream is thickening nicely. Based on how it looks right now, I think we're probably looking at about another half hour to get it to the right thickness and to get it suitably infused with air so that it stays a little bit creamy and doesn't freeze too hard. It's been an hour now and I don't see this getting much thicker, so we're going to turn it off and move it to a container. This is definitely thinner than a batch I did last week using only allulose. And that's probably due to the erythritol and the alcohol sugar. Now this is gonna go into the freezer for at least two or three hours. All right, so this is about three hours. It's a little bit more firm than soft serve. It's really good. It's like, it's creamy for a sherbet, and I think the sour cream really gives it that taste. And it's got just enough of tang from that sour cream and the sourness from the lemon. It's really good. How does it taste compared to the one I did last week? Um, creamier and I think a little subtler. Okay, so I, I, used, I used 50% erythritol this time. Oh, so it's sweeter. Uh, so well, it's less, yeah, it's, I mean, it's less tangy to me. And it's, and it's softer too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really soft. All right, give it a try, dear. Mm. Yeah, lemon and uh, like butter, soft and buttery. All right, I'm interested in trying this because with the erythritol, it should be softer. Mm. You're right about it being way creamier. I think the, uh, the sugar alcohols keep it from freezing quite as hard. This is a win, for sure. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there you go, a ketofied sour cream lemon sherbet. I tried to do right in between sherbet and sherbet there. I don't know if you caught that. I see this as a recipe we can definitely play around with and have some fun with. I'm thinking maybe raspberries or blackberries or blueberries. I'm trying to think what else would go good with sour cream. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified whenever I release a new video, tap that bell. And if you're interested in supporting Serious Keto, click that join button. No obligation, you can see what options are available. Thanks for watching.